So you wanna become a millionaire. So you watch all of the Tony Robbins seminars, you watch all these motivational videos. I mean, hey, you even think that your TikTok is a great place to get financial education. Well, listen up, in today's video, I'm gonna share seven personal money tips that I would give to you after seven years of running a business and making tens of millions of dollars. And most importantly, I'm gonna share stuff that you probably won't find anywhere else because I'm not gonna tell you, oh, don't buy Starbucks because, you know, heavens forbid you spend $4 on a coffee because you can make it for 30 cents at home. I'm not going to give you any stupid scarcity based advice that's built specifically for people that have no self belief, no belief that they can actually go on and accomplish anything in life. No, I'm going to give you seven practical things that you can and should implement from today. So the first step if you want to become a millionaire is stop drinking. Now I actually have a funny story about my first ever tattoo. It says my cup runneth over. Now my cup runneth over means I have more than I need. I'm abundant, but it always used to serve a fun double purpose because in the first few years of starting my business, I was not drinking. Now, whenever someone tried to get me to drink or try to encourage me to drink, of course, I politely declined. And if it kept going, I used to joke with people that didn't know me. I went, listen, I'm a recovering alcoholic. I can't drink. And of course, because I was young, they're like, you're lying, you're joking. And then I used to show them this tattoo. And I used to say, I have this tattoo that says my cup runneth over because, you know, my cup was always overflowing with alcohol. And it was funny because at that point, they would always get super apologetic. So anyways, the reason I tell you this story is just because it brings back memories of the first couple years of my business when I had I hadn't made a million dollars yet. I hadn't made a million dollars after tax. I wasn't a millionaire. And in that time, I did not drink for two reasons. First of all, think about how much money you have wasted, how much money you have spent on useless drinks at the bar, shots. So not only from a financial perspective, and you know, I told you earlier in this video, I think it is absolutely ridiculous that people are so dumb to think, oh, you know how I'm gonna become a millionaire? I'm gonna save all my $4 coffee. It's honestly some of the stupidest shit I've ever heard and I guarantee you any really, really, really high level successful person will never give you advice like that. Whereas for alcohol, I would say don't spend money on it if you are trying to become the person that you want to become. Because listen, that's $4 compared to $40, $80, $150. You know, let's say you're having a fun night. You buy five cocktails for yourself. $15 a pop. Great. $75. Let's say you cover it for your friend. You get a little drunk, you get a little woozy and you're like, you know what? I'll get this one. Great. You just wasted $150 on alcohol. And don't forget, you would have had to earn something closer to, depends on where you live, 200 to $250 in order to actually make that money because the rest goes to tax. So not only have you spent all of this money on alcohol, you have then woken up with less capacity to think clearly and less capacity to actually make money and make your way to that millionaire status. Now, ladies and gentlemen, me at the stage that I'm at, I have a long track record in business. I have the most incredible team between all my companies. I have over 150 employees. So luckily, if I want to have a drink here and there, it doesn't really change my life and it doesn't really affect things. When you get to a certain position in life, that doesn't mean that you should ever slow down. You still need to put your foot on the gas. But what it does mean is that you can do things slightly differently. So if you are serious about becoming a millionaire this year, quit drinking. Now, the best tip to become a millionaire is learn a high income skill. And this is why I keep beating on about that example of the $4 coffee, because listen, people who are hell bent on the whole saving thing, for sure, I respect it. I just personally believe that I don't want to live a life of scarcity. I don't want to live a life where I don't have faith in my abilities to make more money. I think if you're watching this video, you should understand the goal is to make as much money as humanly possible. And by the way, that doesn't mean you need to be an entrepreneur. That doesn't mean you need to be a business owner. If you join the right organization, not some old corporation, some stale company that's 50 years old, and all they care about is just doing things in a safe, predictable way. I mean, if you join a real good company, for example, there's people in my company who make hundreds of thousands of dollars, almost nearly a million dollars a year because they provide even far more value than that to the company. And the way that you do that is by learning a high income skill. So whether that be sales, whether that be copywriting, whether that be content creation, whether that be, and this sounds really funny, but I can tell you, as I said, having 150 plus employees, and there's one specific person that comes to mind. If you are a wizard at Google Sheets and you can put together very good analytics tracking, that is a high income skill. And that's something that is very valuable to most companies. So if you're a little confused on which high income skill is the best in this day and age, and which business model is the best one to start this year. Well, then I'm going to leave a link in the description to my most popular YouTube video. I break down the eight or nine best business models and try to use an equation and math to come to a conclusion of which one makes the most sense for you to start. I use a formula and an equation to get to the bottom of which business model makes the most sense for you to start this year. So I'll go ahead and leave that link in the description. Check it out once you finish this video. But I feel like I made my point very clear, which is no matter what you do, whether you're an entrepreneur, a solopreneur, you own multiple big businesses with lots 
lots of employees like me, or you work in a company and you see a clear path to making a lot more money and you wanna provide value to that company, which is why you are dedicated to learning high income and high impact skills. Whatever it is, just understand that it is far easier to get to millionaire status by increasing your earning potential rather than being scarcity minded and just thinking, oh, I'm gonna save my way. Over the next 17 years, I'm just gonna save my way to a millionaire. Is that really an inspiring life to you? Now, the next way to become a millionaire is have a specific amount each week that you put in a separate account to invest. Now, it's funny, in my position, I've seen so many people make millions and millions and millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars. In fact, I even know people who have made hundreds of millions of dollars and still lost it all. So it doesn't matter if you can become a millionaire if you can't even stay a millionaire. And investing, although it is slightly tedious, it is slightly boring, will help you get to that millionaire milestone even quicker. And this is something that I even apply to this day. My CFO takes 100 grand in profits and dividends, moves that money to one of my banks, siphons it off to a specific account. And in that account, I specifically have cash reserves tucked away for investments. Now, listen, of course, I have worked extremely hard over the years to get to a point where I'm putting away 100 grand a week minimum just for my investments. But it wasn't always like that. I started off with $5 a week. I remember I was 16 years old when I first read Tony Robbins' Money Master the Game. And the second I read it, I created a separate bank account. This is like literally right as my business was first starting. So I had my my main account and then I had my investment account. And every week for my main account, I would just send five pounds over to my investment account because I knew that if I didn't get in the habit of putting away five pounds a week, I would never get in the habit of, you know, years and decades later, putting away hundreds of thousands of dollars a week into investments. So it's just about getting the habit down. Listen, in the same way, if you want to run a marathon, you're not going to lace up and run 42 kilometers. No, you're going to start off light. You're going to start off easy. And eventually your capacity will grow. In the same way your capacity to run grows, so too does your capacity to earn income and then go ahead and invest that. Now, the next money tip for you to become a millionaire is to have coffee in affluent places. Go and have a coffee in an expensive hotel or a very fancy cafe in a super nice area. Because listen, your Starbucks is going to cost $4 and it's not going to be very inspiring. That's for sure. Whereas you might go to a super expensive hotel, you know, for example, here in Dubai, where I'm based or in London, where I used to live, there's all of these nice hotels. You don't need to stay at the hotels. You don't need to spend $2,000 a night on a room. You simply go to the lobby and you have a coffee and the coffee might cost you $8 or $10 compared to $4. But you're going to see, you're going to look around, you're going to see money around you. You're going to see what do wealthy people really wear? Not Gucci and Balenciaga and all this and that. I mean, like really like properly wealthy people. You're going to start to realize the really wealthy people, they wear stuff like this. Laura Piana, Xenia, Brunello, Tom Ford, these sort of brands. They want to blend in. They don't want big logos and this and that. They don't want to scream. So just simply through osmosis, you're going to start to get a feeling. You're going to start to get an understanding for how do these people move? How do they carry themselves? You know, the funny thing is you're going to find in a lot of good establishments, or at least I found personally, people are far more respectful respectful to the waiters. There's a lot more, please, thank you. How was your day? I've personally found that to be true, even though there's a stigma around rich people and wealthy people that they're snobs or, you know, that they're very disrespectful to staff and whatnot. I've personally never found that. I've personally found the better the establishment, the more polite people are, the more thank you, you're welcome. You know, a very interesting thing, you know, here in Dubai or London or New York, you might go to some very nice cigar lounges. And as I said, you can go to a cigar lounge and you can sit there and you can literally just order a coffee. You don't need to smoke a cigar. And listen in, it's very interesting. Even just hear how wealthy people order. They order in a different way. There's a conviction. They have a different tonality in the way that they order. They even have a different pace. The pacing of what they're saying is different than if you just go to some regular normal establishment. Now, the next money tip for you to become a millionaire is pay off your credit card bills as soon as humanly possible. You need to understand that credit card debt is one of the ways that they enslave you. It is one of the ways that they get you stuck in a perpetual loop. You know, you need to understand that if you get into credit card debt soon enough, you're going to be spending more money on the interest and the debt than the actual amount that you owe. So before you listen to any of these other tips, you know, before you go and spend $8 on a coffee because, you know, you're going to have the experience of opulence and wealth around you and all this stuff. If you have credit card debt, clear that that should be your number one focus. You know, credit cards can be an exceptional asset to use, especially in a lot of Western countries, and especially if you're based in the US, but you need to understand how to use it responsibly, how to get the benefits of it. Because by the way, how do you think all these credit card companies make money? When you have all of these signing bonuses and you're, for 
example, with American Express, you rack up all these Amex points and you can use these Amex points for benefits and upgrades and this, like, who do you think is paying for that? You need to understand that the people who are financially irresponsible and don't know how to use credit cards and make the credit card companies so much money by all of the interest that they're paying, these people are subsidizing people like me and hopefully you, if you know how to use credit cards responsibly, they get to reap all of these rewards and all these benefits. And we're just sat here questioning and asking ourselves, why are we getting all these benefits? And we basically don't even need to spend any extra money. Well, that's because all of these people were irresponsible. So please, if you have any credit card debt whatsoever, pay it off ASAP. Now, the next money tip in order to become a millionaire is invest in self-education. Now, listen, I don't care if it's a book, I don't care if it's a seminar, if it's an online program, whatever it is, the way that I look at it is let's say you spend $100. Let's say you spend $1,000. Let's say you spend even $10,000. Do you believe that if you even learn one thing from it, your capacity and your ability to earn income over the space of the next year, three years, five years, 10 years, 30 years will increase because of it. Let's say you wanna learn one very specific skill that could help your career or your job. And there's an online course and it's $150. Do you think that that $150 $50. Let's break it up over the space of the next one year. Do you think that that $13 or whatever it is monthly for the space of the next year would help you make more than $13 a month or increase your chances of getting a 5%, 10%, 30% pay increase? Once again, if you're at the right company, do you think that that little $150 course did, by the way, you saved money on because you didn't go out drinking that month. You committed that you're going to become a person of value. You're going to become a person who can earn more money because they bring more value to the market, whether that be through a business, solopreneur, through a career, whatever it is you choose, sit there and ask yourself, do you back yourself? Because I I believe when it comes to investing in yourself and investing in education, the simple fact of the matter is, do you believe that you are the sort of person that could get this information and make more money from it? I believe that the decision to invest in your education has far more to do with, do you believe in yourself than do you believe in the product, the program, the book, the event, the seminar, whatever it is. I think investing in self-education really comes down to you versus you. Do you back yourself? Do you believe in yourself? Now, the last and final tip to become a millionaire is increase the percentages that you invest. So listen, if you are getting by paycheck to paycheck, I don't want you to invest 50% of everything you make. But as time goes on, I want you to increase the percentage of your income that you invest. I believe that especially in your early 20s, you should be investing 70% of everything you make. As you get into your mid 20s, I believe 60%. As you get into your late 20s, 50% of everything you make. Because listen, I believe in enjoying life, but I also believe in being responsible and setting yourself up for the future. That's been my philosophy. I don't want to be one of these people that has made egregious amounts of money and lost it all. But I also don't want to be one of these penny pinchers that makes all of this money and still lives like frugal. And I personally just find it very off-putting. You know, these people that think so small, you know, I have to hoard all this money. I can't spend any of it. How could I? Right? So you don't want to be either of these people. So once you get to a position where let's say you're making $5,000 a month, $6,000 a month, $10,000 a month, maybe $20,000, $30,000 a month. I know these might sound like crazy numbers to you right now, but just put that, just mentally put that to the side. All right. I'm not saying you need to make it today, but just, I know this might seem scary to you. I know it might seem impossible, but just mentally park those sort of numbers. Just understand that if you get to that point where you're earning this sort of income, once you start Start earning it, I want you to increase the percentage of your income that you're investing. Because the true financial goal is to eventually get to a place where you are living fully off of your dividends. You're living fully off your investment. And no matter what, if you stop making money tomorrow, you will always be fine. So ladies and gentlemen, there are seven money tips to become a millionaire. Please implement every single one of these ASAP and understand this is going to be a process that's not going to happen overnight. But while saying that, there's no such thing as get rich quick. There's simply get rich quicker. So focus on increasing the velocity in which money comes to you, as well as the velocity in which you invest money in order to multiply it. But also understand that this is a process, this is a journey to so just take the first step. And on that note, I'm going to be watching, I'm going to be rooting for you, and I'll see you in the next video.